Greetings and welcome to Education in Focus, powered by Chalkboard News. I'm Dan McCaleb, Chief Content Officer at the Franklin News Foundation, publisher of ChalkboardNews.com. Chalkboard is a news website dedicated to issues related to K-12 education. We are recording this on Monday, March 25th. Students in Michigan and across the U.S. suffered significant learning loss after government-mandated school closures during the COVID-19 pandemic. Standardized test scores dropped significantly and haven't returned to pre-COVID levels. That's widely known. But what might not be as widely known is this. In spite of the fact that more students in Michigan can't read or write at grade level, virtually zero teachers in the state were rated ineffective in the 2022-23 school year. And that's despite the fact that student growth and assessment data must account for 40% of teachers' annual year-end evaluations. Joining me today to discuss this is Chalkboard's K-12 editor, Brendan Clary. Brendan, I'm not quite understanding. How can just about all teachers be evaluated as highly effective or effective if student scores are plummeting? Yeah, Dan, that's, that is sort of the crux of the question. I think that it comes down to how they're actually evaluated, right? And so that's the key there is like there, there are metrics that the school districts are using to try to determine uh, educator effectiveness. And specifically, you know, they're, they're, they're basically, I think that's tied to, you know, your bonuses and your different kinds of, um, you know, advancement and, and different kinds of salary opportunities there. So I think that, that that is essentially what is being being talked about. And there's this is going back to basically an Obama era uh, law. There were some changes to the um, states, like how the state uh, required school districts to evaluate teachers, right? And so this is going back to this. And I mean, so this is 2011, I believe, um, in the early uh, 2010s that this changes these changes were made and they basically they started tying that to the student data but what it points to Dan is you know there is sort of this disconnect between the ineffective teacher like between ineffective teachers and you know some of these test scores right there there are these declines but I think that you can you know you can kind of point to that that students are performing year over year you know like there there are different metrics and different maybe ways to um, kind of get through the the test scores that that show academic achievement changes like that like year over year you can still say like okay like I'm I'm still an effective teacher and that that doesn't constitute for for all of it that that does have to that does have to play in but that doesn't constitute for all of it so you can look at different like different metrics as well but I think that 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 ranges from district to district and uh, there are, there are differences now uh, in that state law Dan so that's that was a recent change from the legislature. Uh, last year, uh, effective this year, that this this upcoming school year, that that that's going to actually change. So when when teachers are talking with their districts about their effectiveness, it's not going to be tied to the test scores. So that's that's an interesting change that's coming up, um, and that was pushed for by different teachers advocates. And I want to I want to make it clear. I think a lot of teachers in Michigan are you know doing doing their best, but you know there's going to be some teachers who are maybe um, not cut out for teaching. And what we're finding is that this is not revealing any of those, right? Or some of those teachers who might be ineffective. So I'm, I'm not trying to cast aspersions on the teaching profession and, and educators in Michigan, but I think that this kind of shows more about the evaluation system, like that that the majority of that. So for example, in Detroit, I just looked up how many how many employees total were referred to the district for discipline by the Office of Inspector General. And it was more, empl- more employees. I mean, and they don't differentiate between you know, bus drivers or uh, administrators or, or teachers, but more employees uh, were referred for discipline than were deemed ineffective, right, by by the state standards. So that that is, you know, it kind of raises questions. And I think it, it sort of alludes to how those teachers are being rated through that system. And so that is that is changing and that is going away. But that, is, you know, it, it kind of points to like, you know, what you what you were mentioning, like this sort of disconnect between like the, this rating system, which it seems more or less arbitrary and, you know, how how educators are actually doing. So just going back the the change, the legislative change when it comes to these uh, teacher evaluations, it's a change in the law, I guess. But when you look at teacher evaluations, you know, before the new law goes in effect and, and, and the student test scores, it doesn't look like teacher evaluations were, even though the, the law required 40% of their evaluation to be graded on two student test scores and student assessments, it doesn't really look that like that was being applied 
anyway, because because as as we've said, and, so, and again, you, we're talking about teachers in general. We're not talking about any specific teachers. There are plenty of great teachers in Michigan schools, no doubt about it. But the data doesn't really seem to indicate that these student assessments were being factored into evaluations anyway. Well, and so, you know, part of that might come down to student growth, right? So how do you say like a student growth and like that might be a, the difference between a pre-test and a post-test and that's not tied to an assessment, right? So you can say like they've learned more because I was teaching them, you know, than they, 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 they I did effectively communicate the material to them. So that, that you know, that could be part of that uh, 40% there or like have different kinds of metrics. So I, I agree with you. I think that that is part of the thing, but it does point to, you know, like when you have like a whole state and there's, you know, maybe a few hundred teachers that are rated ineffective. It sort of, maybe it starts raising questions of how do you gauge teacher effectiveness? And more broadly too, should we be keeping track of teacher effectiveness? And I think that that's sort of the broader push with this new change, Dan, is that, you know, that's not going to be part of the metric anymore. Like the student account, like the state assessment is not really going to be as much of a part of the metric anymore. So, you know, it's a 20% of the year end evaluation must be based on student growth and assessment data or student. So it's, it's drastically reducing that number. It's, it's having it, right? So that's still a factor, but it's much less of a factor. It's a fifth of, of the factor as, as to, to teacher performance and how that's evaluated. So I think that that's the broader question is, how do you make sure that you have the most effective teachers? And is the state law doing that? Is it is it holding them accountable? Or, you know, is it easing that up and, and allowing? So, so it, it depends, I think, on how districts in, implement it. You know, they could have different metrics that they use. And if they're still really pushing and making sure that they're evaluating teachers rigorously, then it might not be a big deal. But, you know, if there might be districts that are less well-staffed and maybe they're having a hard time with getting more teachers to, to come, if it's more rural district, that kind of thing, then maybe they don't have that kind of accountability measure. Maybe they're not looking for that. So I, I think it kind of, you know, starts to maybe get a little bit more more granular there. But I, I think that's the broader question is how do you evaluate and kind of push for excellence statewide and then, you know, in the district level too. Well, it's going to take a bit for to us to see how these changes um, in teacher evaluations actually work in the real world, uh, Brennan. We know you'll be covering it at Chalkboard News. Brennan, thank you for joining us today. Listeners can keep up with this story and all stories related to K-12 education at ChalkboardNews.com. Some people would call him a loser. He ran for state office. He was beaten. He started a business. He failed. He ran for Congress. He lost. He was nominated for vice president. He lost again. But he knew only those who never tried are the real losers. And Abraham Lincoln was no loser. Persistence. Pass it on. From the Foundation for a Better Life at Values.